I never thought she'd see you two together. Nice to see you again, Traveler and Paimon. Oh, we're not interrupting anything, are we? <laughs> not at all. I wasn't in the middle of an interview or anything. I was just asking Miss Kuching about purchasing a kite. A kite? Are you buying some regional specialties to bring back to Fontaine? Well, yes. And... <laughs> it seems you haven't heard yet. The theme of this year's Lantern Rite is kites. Ah, oh, so that's why Paimon has seen so many floating in the sky. Liyue Harbor is always changing, so it is only fitting that Lantern Rite should change in turn. The Qixing believes it would benefit Liyue to build on our own cultural foundation by embracing the technologies of other nations. After all, it is said that the stones of another mountain may serve to better polish one's own jade. Yeah, remember my business meeting with Tian Chuan Ningguang the last time I was in Liyue Harbor? That's what it was about! But all I really did was use my network to introduce Lady Ningguang to some interesting people. I'm not sure that quite counts as fostering cooperation. In the end, we decided to combine Liyue's traditional art of kite making with Fontaine's mechanical vertical lifting device. Mechanical lifting device? Sounds pretty impressive. Uh, but don't kites just use the wind to fly? Why would you need to add something mechanical? Well, you've actually just answered your own question, Paimon. How high and far a kite can fly depends as much on the weather conditions as on the skill of the person holding the string. But as soon as there's no wind, you can only flail about helplessly like a sweet flower medaka out of water. Experience doesn't matter at that point. Exactly. Liyue is now a nation ruled by humans, after all. It's about time we had the power to make a kite fly, don't you think? Plus, the easier we can make it to enjoy, the more people will want to participate. Right? I also thought it was a novel idea. Plus, it shouldn't cost much to do. With Miss Charlotte's help, everything has gone smoothly. Our new mechanical kites are already available to purchase from a stall in the harbor. We're having trouble keeping up with demand. We also gave quite a bit of thought to the price. We didn't want it to be too much more expensive than a traditional kite. Cool! Turns out you two and Ningguang like playing with toys just as much as Paimon! Uh, toys? They're not exactly toys. You see, Miss Kuching, that does seem to be everyone's first reaction. Hmm... Although kites are one of our most time-honored cultural relics, Outside of their use in certain ceremonies, I suppose they're considered playthings more than anything now. But to me, there's so much more than that. Think for a second about how remarkable it is that a flimsy paper kite attached to a string has the capacity to touch the sky. It is this slight piece of paper that also carries the weight of Liyue's cultural traditions. There's an old poem that goes, O oh, kite born of paper, flying true and sound, a lone traveler wanders, just waiting to be found. In the past, poets from Liyue used kites to symbolize a feeling of longing, or evoke the peacefulness of idyllic rural scenery. If the people of today can derive enjoyment from this activity, they will not only be more likely to better appreciate the tradition, but also to pass it down to the people of tomorrow. That's the Kuching we know, always thinking five steps ahead of anyone else. Well said, Miss Kuching. I've learned quite a bit myself. <laughs> as long as you're willing to listen, I'm happy to share. I also know quite a lot about the various folk traditions related to kites. For example, whenever a kite blew away, people would say it was the Adepti that summoned the wind to take it away as an offering. That way, you can turn an unfortunate event into an auspicious one. What about something... more fun? Do you know what- More fun... Hmm, let me think. Oh, I suppose we should first talk about how kites are made. It's another one of our precious forms of traditional craftsmanship. My grandfather told me that, back when he was a boy, children learned the art of kite making step by step from their elders. First, you use the thin strips of bamboo to construct the frame. Then, you draw a design of your choice on a piece of paper, paste it onto the frame, and tie on the string. Then, you look towards the sky and release the kite to soar among the clouds. Some people write down certain names or desires on their kites, cut the string, and let them fly free. Others may place particular thoughts or meaning into the design itself. 
Are certain designs associated with certain meanings? <laughs> I'm gonna jot all of this down. Hmm. Well, for example, kites in the shape of a butterfly typically symbolize freedom, happiness, or the desire to break free. Fascinating. What else can you tell me? The scissored-tailed swallow is the most classic design. It symbolizes good fortune and joyful tidings. Different colors also have small variations in meaning. Are these commonly understood meanings and symbols in Liyue? Kind of like the language of flowers in Fontaine. Hmm, I believe so. Most have probably heard something about it from their elders at some point. If you're interested, Miss Charlotte, I have several books on the topic that I could lend you. They could be a useful reference. That would be a huge help! Great! Looks like I've got the outline for quite the article on my hands. Perfect! We're gonna take a look around! Then I'll show Miss Charlotte to my home for a little while. Ah, I almost forgot. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is hosting a kite flying contest on the night of Lantern Rite. If you're interested, you're more than welcome to bring a kite and participate. The rules are simple. Whoever flies their kite the highest and furthest within the time limit will receive a special honor along with a secret prize. I've already prepared more than enough empty film for the event. I can see the spectacle already! Oh, Paimon was on board the moment you said secret prize! <laughs> then I'll look forward to seeing your performance. You Wait, Traveler? Take a peek to your right. Do you see those two people lurking over there? Is it just Paimon? Or were they staring at us the whole time we were talking to Kuching and Charlotte just now? Hmm, they seem fishy. Huh. Well, yes, but something's up. Paimon just has a bad feeling. Do you think they could be treasure hoarders? They always seem to be stirring up trouble during Lantern Rite. Oh, I'm on sick of waiting around for something bad to happen. We should strike first, you know. Foil their plans before they even begin. You go right, Paimon.